This is Art Breeder. One of the most popular things that people do with this is to create these beautiful portraits of human beings. The first thing that we do in Art Breeder is we go to the top right hand corner and press on the little plus. From here you can select the type of genre that you want to use for your image. We're going to go with a portrait and the first thing that happens is it generates three random portraits for you. Here we can see we have a nice young lady, another nice young lady, and finally, ah, a oriental lady with beautiful orange hair and some sort of strange hat. The idea here is that you can go to the top here to add parents and from this what we do is we select a parent image that it will use as a trunk to build upon. So you can have a look through here and pick one out that stands out to you. quite like this uh, slightly alien looking one. And we will now get three new photos. Wow. Uh, I've never seen someone with eyes like these. Eyes that burn right into your soul. Uh, on the right hand side we have a number of sliders which we can use to adjust different parameters in the images. The first one is hat, so you can add a nice hat to your women. Put on some glasses, maybe we'll reduce the glasses. I'm not quite sure what happens if we go with less than zero glasses. Oh, we get some slightly younger looking people. We can add more makeup. And here we have a, a young baby with a lot of foundation on. And we can add earrings. Let's see what happens if we have 70 earrings. So we didn't quite get any earrings on these ones, but they did all become slightly more green, which can be useful. Let's go back down to some less earrings and we'll move these slightly back to the center not to go too wide. And if you come down the, you have a hair and eyes option where you can increase or decrease the facial hair. So as these are women, we'll make sure to give them a hundred hair. Uh, whoops, what have we done here? Oh my God, it looks like Wolverine's baby. Uh, these are quite wonderful looking uh, people. I enjoy the feminine masculine merge that we have here. But let's uh, stop messing around and give you a proper tutorial. So the other sliders that we have available here are to do with the expression and the emotion that you can put into the portrait. You have the mouth open or the mouth closed, depending on if you prefer people with open mouths or closed mouths. Here they're looking much more jolly and I'm enjoying this. They're bringing a smile to my face and a smile to your face too, I hope. We can open their eyes. And one thing that I particularly appreciate is the ability to uh, change the emotion on the human beings. So we can change them from angry to happy. Now this should be very angry people. Uh, certainly reminds me a little bit of Anakin from the remake of Star Wars. He was not a good actor. So let's make them happy and angry. Happy, angry. Oh, this is certainly a Bond villain style. And you have the opportunity to adjust the race, the ethnicity of our portrait. Wow. And of course you can change the gender and age of your creative portrait. And if you're not happy with what you've turned out with, if you've completely destroyed the system like I have and all you have is this psychedelic bowl of soup, you can come right back to the top and press reset and go right back to the beginning and get something a little bit more human looking. And we can be a little bit more subtle with our changes here. So let's just add a little bit of anger. I do like angry women. I mean, there we have it. Yeah, we're getting some really interesting images coming out here now. Wow, look at this, it's very avatar-like. Now you can also add a second parent image if you desire and see what we get between these two. Wow. They're Incredibly engaging photos, I would say. I mean, this looks, reminds me of Lara Croft. But I can understand how people spend a lot of time going through this. And they certainly are an amalgamation of some of the most enthralling features that we find as humans. It's particularly interesting how large the eyes are, how delicate the expressions are, and this consistency of, of the sparrow mouth, which is culturally popular in these moments. I think it would be quite interesting to try to create your own face. Can you create something that looks the most like you can? Or even a slightly improved version. What? But we're all perfect. No. So I'm now going to take you through a, another version of this and we're going to work on some landscapes. Wow, these are stunning. This definitely looks like Mordor to me. And 
The custom genres that you have, you can add different features, different landscape features in here. You can add more rivers. You can add red sky, vegetation, sea, meta valley, trees, architecture, mountains, sunlight, snow, and fog. And of course, you can also start off with a new image. Let's try something a little bit arctic. The tundra. Nothing quite like the tundra. Similar to my soul. My soul. Wow, these are beautiful. I'm going to save that one. I like that one. Save it. And I think for me, what's, uh, what's incredible about these is you can really use these in your own designs. There's no limit to what you're allowed to do with these. And if you want to come back to all the images you saved, all you have to do is come and click on this uh, interesting avatar that you have in the top right hand corner and you can download your images. So you get five high res images before you have to upgrade to the premium version. Now, an interesting point on Artbreeder is to make sure that you know that all images are public domain. So you can use them for anything, even commercial purposes. You can use them to be resold and used wherever you like. Now, it is strongly suggested, they say on their site, that you cite an Artbreeder image URL when sharing something that strongly resembles an Artbreeder image. Uh, now, particularly important is that if you're not using private mode, other people can see and find the images that you have created and use them. So if in some way you want to protect the copyrights of the thing that you have created, you need to use private mode. Uh, and for me, this uh, starts to raise some of the interesting quandrums of artificial intelligence as who owns the copyright when you create these? If you are creating, obviously, images that are specifically designed, programs, algorithmically trained to be pleasing to the human eye, undoubtedly there are going to be images that are created that are very, very similar. And because they've been created by the AI, what sort of rights do we start having? As we are creating an infinitely larger amount of artworks, the gaps between artworks, between the differences in the artwork that two people may have created using the same software, using the same prompts that are so similar, who owns the artwork? Copyright. I think this is a challenge going forward for art and design in general. I mean, it's always been a challenge about how close something can be before it is deemed to be stolen. And what is the difference between inspiration and copying? Obviously, we, we all need to ins be inspired. Perhaps there are no I new ideas. There are only old ideas that have been connected in a new way. But that may still be a new idea. But this is a conversation that I will continue in another video. Uh, for now, I hope you've enjoyed Artbreeder. I'll leave a link to it in the comments below. I'd love to know how you find it. What do you think? What are you going to create with it? And what are your thoughts on the future of AI and design? I'm Samson Voles. This is Delightful Design. If you enjoy my videos, why not subscribe? I would appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me. I love being able to share this with you. I hope you have a delightful day, a wonderful life, and always move from a place of love.